Hey folks, this is Seth Mayo, curator of astronomy for the Lohman Planetarium. And this is just a quick video celebrating the super flower moon that we have tonight. This is tonight on May 6th. The exact time of the full moon is tomorrow morning on May 7th at 6.45 Eastern Daylight Time. But we thought it would just be fun to celebrate this on May 6th, uh, pretty close to it. So. What is a super flower moon? Well, first, a super moon is when the moon is pretty close to us in its orbit, also called a perigean moon. And when it's full and a perigean moon, we sometimes call that a super moon. Now in astronomy, that doesn't mean a whole lot. It may mean the moon will be a little bit bigger. You probably won't notice it and maybe a little bit brighter since it is closer to us, but it's not a whole lot different. So even though they're not really rare or unique, it's still fun to talk about the moon. Any excuse you get to explain how the moon works and how phases work is always worth it. And the flower moon is called that because this is a full moon in May when flowers are blooming. So combine all that together, you have the super flower moon, kind of a fun name. And what we'll do here is we have the, one of the MOAS telescopes pointed at the moon We'll take this camera and we're gonna hook it to the back here and just take a quick video of the moon in all of its super flower moon glory. So we'll just connect it right to it. Here we go. All right, so now we have the camera connected to the telescope and we can really see the splendor of our super flower moon. What a sight and amazing we can see the moon like this through a telescope and just to show you, uh, we are looking through a telescope and not just a really cool picture is I can slew the scope in a couple directions here to show you that I have control over where the moon is in here and as we move the scope in different ways so this is an amazing view that I'm looking at through the camera as I speak to you now of our super flower moon what a sight now like I said earlier the moon is a little bit closer to us than normal uh, usually it's about 238,000 miles away on average. Tonight, it's about 224,000 miles away. So about 14,000 miles closer to us, under two Earth widths closer than usual. That may seem like a lot, and it is for us, but for the moon, that's not a big difference. So it's about a six to 7% increase in diameter, and to your eyes, that's something you may not notice the area percentage actually increases more, up to 15%. So the brightness of the moon can be noticed by the eye. So the moon may look a little bit brighter during a supermoon such as this. But again, not a big, big difference. But still cool to kind of uh, celebrate the moon at this time. Tides are a little bit stronger. Combination of the earth or the sun and the, and the moon bulging the earth. And when it's supermoon, th that bulging effect is a little bit increased, just a tad bit. And so high tides are higher, low tides are lower. And as we look at the moon in this way, you can see the dark and light splotches on the surface. The dark areas are what are called mare, which is Latin for sea. And they're, they used to be thought of as oceans or bodies of water or seas on the surface of the moon. They're a lot newer and they have smoother terrain from the lava kind of smoothing out and iron rich so that's why they're darker to the top right you have mare chrysium which is sea of crises below that kind of middle to the kind of near the top you have two next to each other mare serenitatis to the left sea of serenity and mare tranquillitatis to the right which is sea of tranquility where neil armstrong and buzz aldrin landed on the moon over 50 years ago to the left of those, kind of another circular shape, quite a big one, is Mare Imbrium, which is Sea of Showers, Sea of Rain. It's my favorite one, at least for the name. And if you look also in these brighter white areas, which are called the highlands, so they're higher up, they're older, and they're heavily cratered. So if you look at the bottom right of the moon, see that very circular, very defined crater with these spikes shooting out? That's the Tycho Crater, named after Tycho Brahe famous observer of the skies. And that ray effect comes from the material kind of shooting out and creating this sort of spoke pattern away from the crater. 
And then you look to the kind of middle again and to the left, another white circle, another crater that's called the Copernicus crater, named after Nicholas Copernicus, who theorized that the sun should be put in the center of the solar system. So some of these features named after famous scientists, famous people, and those dark blotches are Latin for seas. So it's always great to see the moon in any form, any phase. And on a night like this, it's big. You see the entire face. You see all the different features on the moon and worth celebrating any time, Earth's closest celestial neighbor. Uh, so anyway, happy moon gazing. Thanks for tuning in and happy super flower moon. Take care.